What's up everybody? It is I, LL here, and today we are going to be looking into some newly emerging Layer 1 blockchains. And man, there has never been such an alpha list on the channel's history as we have here today. So make sure you are going to be watching this video because you don't want to miss out on these huge opportunities that I'm going to be presenting you here today. Now, I also want to send out shout outs to Larry, who introduced a lot of these projects to me. Now, let's get started. So understanding what happened basically last year, we had a lot of new layer ones emerge, but most of them were based on two different technologies, one being EVM, Ethereum virtual machine. So like Oak Exchange, KuCoin Chain, uh, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, you know, all of them use the same EVM basis and there's always certain limitations what you can do with an EVM. And the other popular one obviously is uh, Cosmos, which uses the Tendermint, and then obviously Luna uses Tendermint, Osmo, Juno, and those have basically been the most popular places to launch your um, blockchain based on, you know, the base tech, and then obviously like a lot of coins still that are in top 100 are based on Bitcoin, like Litecoin and Dose and etc. But there are new emerging technologies which are using something that is made purely or at least partially from the scratch and that op opens new opportunities. And just to mention you a couple of ones that were in the coin list, we had Solana, Elrond and Flow and all of those were sell sold at like a couple of cents. And those people who participated on those initial sales of these new blockchains made significant amount of money. And that's my basis here, that every time that there's a new blockchain that comes out that is not using the EVM, there's a lot of potential there, a lot of potential investors who could take the, you know, moon skyrocketing. Okay, but let's get started. So the first project that we have here on the list is called Aptos. And Aptos is from Facebook's project, or now known as Meta. So initially they had the project known as Libra, which was later named into DM. And DM um, basically was shut down by Facebook. I think probably legal problems and, you know, a lot of push from the community and, you know, all types of things would basically led into them abandoning it. And now the people who are working on DM, I'm, I'm not sure like how many people transitioned to Aptos, but at least considerable amount or at least one of the base developers. And now they're going to be launching Aptos. And it's probably going to be somewhat different from Deem. I think it probably is going to be um, less centralized than Deem was supposed to be, but also probably, you know, more centralized than your average blockchain project. That is my like hunch. I don't have any proof for that. There are now like incentivized test nets going around. They managed to get 200 million fundraise here. So that's a quarter of a billion. Uh, Tree Arrows Capital, Parafi, Hashed, Variant, Tiger Global, Black Tower, FTX Ventures, and FT and Coinbase Ventures. So when you have these two names here, what does that mean? That means that there's probably going to be a listing for FTX and Coinbase for this coin. And those are not going to be happening maybe in the beginning. In case of Coinbase, it might be well true because they have been moving a bit more faster than they used to be. And there's not like multitude of a lot of information here that is like for um, the everyday user. There is like developer notes and where they kind of go on to what they are basically uh, building out here. But Aptos also has a partnership with Binance. There was an announcement like they were in the incubation or something. And that makes me also bullish. So Aptos has like almost guaranteed to basically get exchange listed on every top exchange. And it may not happen immediately, which means that you have the time to buy it uh, very early on. And I don't know what they're striving to get. It's going to be a different form of a blockchain from what we have seen in the past. And I'm always excited about new forms of technologies because they have different types of solution for fees and smart contracts and UX and all that stuff. So it makes me excited. But Aptos, you know, that's just because of the sheer, you know, partnerships that are already formed. This could be very promising. Next up, we have Alio and we have two privacy projects here. And, you know, in the beginning and until not too recently, most of or almost every um, 
privacy coin was proof of work based. Now, recently we had things like secret network, which is, you know, delegated proof of stake. And we're going to be having a lot more privacy chains, which are like fully using proof of stake or some type of other consensus, which is not proof of work. And I don't fundamentally believe that these proof of work based privacy coins are going to be hanging around too long for obvious reasons, because I guess in some aspects, it's easier to maybe track people's mining locations as it is maybe where they're staking. That's a bit of a hunch there. And I'm not saying that it's a factual statement, but Monero is probably going to be around and pirate chain. But, you know, a lot of these other like Mimble, Wimble coin and Beam, they have been performing really poorly as of late. So uh, people want to have like a lot of things, not just like the privacy. They want smart contracts as well. And I don't know what base Alio is using. Is this a totally different or something? But I'm pretty sure it's not an EVM. And um, they talk about private applications. So I assume that this is going to be like, you know, um, and there's always like studio stuff and they use zero knowledge proofs. I think that uh, there's some code here already for people who want to get into. So um, I'm getting also the understanding that you are able to basically build a smart contracts type of Alio. And th there's already a test set which people can look into. Um, yeah, it's not an EVM because this is not an EVM structure. And there's like a mining reward. I'm not 100% sure actually is this proof of work or not. So, you know, um, I'm pretty new to these projects, which I got like introduced to. But I will be doing some more research on these projects and talking about them on the channel in the future. But today I'm just going to be introducing these to you before it's too late to get invested because all of these are infant stages where they may not even have like initial sales yet and once you see the initial sale happening you want to ape in basically but let's let's move on next up we have sui and this is also going to be building kind of a lot of promising things based on what they're saying here and what they're saying is sui's first permission permissionless layer one blockchain designed from the ground up to enable creators and developers build experiences to cater next billion of users in web3 so one of the things they claim here, fast as fuck. So instantly, instant finality. So when there's a TPS, you know, like 100 or something, um, when the transaction goes through, um, it doesn't mean when it gets the first confirmation that it's finalized at that point. So there's a delay also on the finality. Being able to promise instant finality is very promising. Low fees, I mean, I've talked about this a million times on the channel. What is low fee? Is it below a cent or a cent? So for me, it's, it's like maybe tenth of a cent is a low fee. How, that's how I would consider it right now. And horizontally scalable. Now, designed for real people, this is one of the big selling points here, which sold me at least. Last key, no problem, recover assets with our intermediary. So maybe you can bound like an email, for example. So... Um, or SMS perhaps to, uh, you know, you can bind your phone or email. So if you lose your private keys or lose your seed phrase, you're voila, like that able to basically recover them. This is a game changer thing, okay? Um, or that might be a thing that Sui comes along with. And then later on, maybe some other chains are able to adapt this, but unlikely because I think it's like a very core, you know, root of the development to basically have such a mechanism build it out. Now, send assets directly via email, SMS, DMs, or any other channel. That's pretty huge, okay? Uh, human readable signing requests, know exactly what you're giving permission to. Um, digital assets unlock, create more utility into NFTs and store directly. Okay, this is a very vague, doesn't really go into like what does that mean, but already those points that are sold out here sound pretty good. So Sui has the lowest Posca compute for any blockchain, okay? So we can assume that this, uh, so he is, yeah, so he is um, going to be a form of proof of stake. And it's also going to be having smart contracts. Um, so great. Okay, so Sui is something that I'm very, very bullish on. And it can be, you know, there's all types about gaming. And a lot of these things like, you know, losing your keys and things like that can be very bullish, you know. And... That can, that can lead to many, many opportunities out there. But Sui is definitely something I would keep uh, definitely my eyes on on this list. Next up, we have NIM. And this is another privacy-based uh, blockchain that is being built out right now. 
Um, and basically, NIM is developing the infrastructure to prevent data leakage by protecting every packet metadata at, at the network and application layers. So we can uh, have the NFT, obviously, you know, the IPFS linked to that NFT can be inside the metadata and nobody is able to basically view it inside the blockchain, which can be um, used for many different things. And there's already like a video that you can watch on, on, on the page here, which kind of goes into the global privacy things. As I've understood it, it's not a mineable coin. It's also like a form of a different distribution from proof of work. Uh, traffic analysis adversary capable of watching the entire network, including NSA. Incentivize privacy and is used to make mixing decentralized, sustainable and resilient. And allow third party apps to anonymize any arbitrary key value pairs so users can privately reveal part of or all of their data to their discretion for any necessary compliance or authentication. So this means that um, uh, tax office come to ask for different types of information and I can share only my balances. So I don't need to go show like, uh, you know, what type of NFTs I have here. So I can show the partial data, which is like legally re required of me to basically show, or I just want to show a certain part of data to my friends. I don't maybe want to know what NFTs are holding if maybe I'm storing porn there or something like that. So that's a very interesting that I can show partial data of from my actual wallet. And that's a pretty much a game changer in my opinion. And here they kind of look into these like accounts and data information and already a lot of funding here from uh, different, this company was also invested in the first project we were uh, talking about Aptos and there's an incentivized testnet um, already. And this has been in the making for quite some time, but I think it's launching or making some big milestones this year. Um, so yeah, this, this could be, and also support for decentralized VPNs. So that's also interesting to see how, how they, that will turn out. Um, there has been a couple of entities that have been trying it out, but this could be operating more on the on-chain level, which could offer a lot more benefits. And then let's move into our next project, which is called Space Mesh. And this is a new proof of space or proof of capacity, to be honest, guys, like, I wish we would use the proof of capacity because proof of space is also POS, so we could just call it POC. But, you know, that's me, but, but yeah. So what is so special about space mass? Well, I think it really boils down into the system requirements. So, for example, when I was looking into like, what would be the operational cost to get involved with Filecoin? It was around $4,000. Uh, I was looking into Chia, uh, you need terabytes of free space in your computer with both of them. And most of all proof of uh, capacity and things have always had very high barrier of entry to start mining. Now, based on the space mesh system requirements, these are very accessible um, in terms of like having a Windows 10, eight gigabytes of RAM, not much and 100 gigabytes of free space. That's like pretty much nothing. And five MBS download and one MBS upload. Those are pretty, uh, very, very cheap in very many first world countries. I think I have 110 myself right now or 210, not sure, but, um, and obviously internet and like hard drive spaces, they, they are becoming cheaper and they will become more cheaper as time goes up. But 150 gigabytes is like, I think you can buy a hard drive for 20 bucks for that. Eight gigs of RAM, uh, that's $60 tops. If you have buy four, two or four G GPs. Um, as for the processors, I have to look more into that, but we are talking about very affordable $200 investment to basically get that computer perhaps, roughly, who knows? So barrier of entry to mine with this project is very low and there's also support for Linux and Mac as well. And probably even like low end laptops can probably, you know, run this. So, um, and it will use a form of CPU. I don't think it will like prove, you know, we're not talking about trillions of, you know, electricity being used on, on the same. It's not, it might overheat your laptop in, in the laptop's case, but still like, 
this could become like the first time I'm definitely going to be mining it and uh, I will be doing videos about it because I obviously I always been a big proponent uh, for proof of capacity because it's probably the most and fairest model there is um, outside some IoT mining projects but I, I like it and probably in the future also there's going to be a lot more accessible when it comes down to when you can start mining with your, your phone that's the game breaker that's the game changer that you're going to be having and i think in a way there are a lot of phones that have um you know there are some phones which could basically meet these requirements i don't know at least i know there are a lot of modern phones which have 200 gigabytes of free space but the ram is probably not met so yeah but maybe in the future it could be possible but let's in, jump into the very last project here on the list, which is Supra Oracles. And this is basically a direct competitor for Chainlink and basically it's on, on chain. Band Protocol obviously did that, um, but they have that whole bit of a drama thing, which probably, and they haven't really done anything ever since. So I don't know, I still hold it back, but, but Supra is like claiming to be very fast, accurate, also offering smart contracts. So this could be a big game and it doesn't need to even reach to the um, valuation where Chainlink right now is. It can maybe reach the half of that market cap and still could be a terrific investment. And I think the Supra Oracles is going to be launching in quarter four. And they talk about truly decentralized, massive scalability, uh, ultra fast and secure, quick finality, something we already touched upon on this video. Uh, Chainlink average 120 seconds to reach finality. Super Oracles is offering three to five seconds. So we're talking about very superior project and compatible with Ethereum, Solana, Polygon, Cardano, Hashgraph, that is Hedera Hashgraph, Tezos, Avalanche, Binance Smart Chain, and many more. So EVM chain supported plus Cardano and Tezos and Hashgraph. So um, maybe if you add, you know, the Tendermint chains there and the Polkadots, um, it's going to be pretty great. So all things considered, and I'll look at these partners here, maybe Zilliqa and the Infinity are also in that list along with Arweave um, and MasterCard, you know. So this is going to be also a huge player I mean, the fact of the matter is I'm investing on all of these. I just don't know when they're going to be having their sales exactly. Are they going to be private sales through um, certain exchanges or is it just going to be credit accredited investors, yada, yada, yada. So you don't know. But what I'm saying here is that these types of projects, newly emerging blockchains, which are not based on an existing technology, have a very good track record of performing insanely well from the initial price that they're sold on on these you know initial offerings so what i'm telling you is these could be life-changing money the big place and um then obviously there is that when is the bear market ending and starting and things like that but to be fair projects that were released after the uh, last bear market in 2018 was it you know you had still projects that were skyrocketing during that bear market that we're launching, I think, like Icon and uh, Atom, for instance. But hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like the video. And um, for business inquiries, the email is in the video. So in case you want to do some work with me. But um, yeah, this was a very, just to clear, this was a very quick run through all of these six projects here today. And I'm definitely going to be going more deeper into them in future, maybe more in more specific videos where we can delve into more of the, you know, nitty gritty details about tokenomics and all that. But thanks for watching. I will be seeing you next time.